Hola amigos and welcome to Sangineering. Okay, we're just doing some more problems. Let's keep them coming. Chemical process analysis number 2.7. It's a lot of units, but you know, I really, really like doing problems because that's the most efficient way to learn engineering, in my opinion. And it also depends on the class, but nine times out of 10, doing problems is the most efficient way to learn. So what do we got today? So a supersonic aircraft uh, consumes 5,000... 320, 5,320 imperial gallons of kerosene per hour of flight. These are key words, all right? I've worked through these problems. And flies an average of an average of 14 hours per day. It takes roughly seven tons of crude oil to produce one ton of kerosene. The density of kerosene is that. How many planes would it take to consume the entire annual world production of, okay, entire annual world production of 4.02 times 10 to 9 metric tons of crude oil. All right, so there's a lot to digest here. Um, this is just a lot of unit conversions. It's very messy on purpose because, you know, we just want to practice, you know? But let's try, to, let's try to go through this, you know? All right, so what we're gonna do first is write down our givens. I think from now on, I'm gonna write um, all the givens in purple and uh, and then all the equations in green. So let's see. So a supersonic aircraft. So the aircraft, oh God, let's see if I can, oh God, oh God. All right, that is my best attempt at trying to plan. <laughs> okay, so it's exhausting all this fuel. Um, And so it exhausts a rate of 5,320 5, imperial gallons of kerosene per hour per flight. So this 5,320 imperial gallons of kerosene per hour of flight. Now this per hour of flight is actually important because if it wants us to determine how many planes, we're gonna assume that one plane is one flight, right? You know, so we're gonna multiply this by planes. So one plane is consuming 5,320 imperial gallons of kerosene per hour. Make sense? All right, what else do we know? Um, so it flies an average of 14 hours per day. And if intuition is correct, you might wanna just kind of cancel out. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Uh, no, let's, let's do it, let's, do, let's hold off. So let's just consider 14 hours of flight per day. And what else do we have? So we have some more conversion factors. Um, it takes roughly seven tons of crude oil. We're gonna use CO to denote crude oil to produce one ton of kerosene. All right, the density of kerosene is rho for density. It's a Greek letter rho. 0 0.965 grams per centimeter cube. So I haven't done a video on density yet, but if I have, um, check the description, because um, density can be a little bit tricky. And so the question asks, how many planes would it take to consume the entire annual world production of 4.02 times 10 to the 9 metric tons of crude oil? So that means 4.02 times 10 to the 9 metric tons of crude oil per year, right? That's the tricky part. That was, a tr that was a tricky part for me. So game plan. So game plan is we have to convert what we know and use these conversion factors to determine the amount of planes. Before I continue, if you're actually studying for this class or whatever engineering class or whatever you're doing, highly, highly recommend that you uh, practice by yourself. Stop watching the video and just practice by yourself. All right, did you get it? If not, that's all right. <clears throat> it, can be, it can be very tricky. So what we're going to do is Let's just start with what we know. So there's a lot of knowns here. Um, I just ch chose to start with the final thing that's given. So I'm gonna use this. So if we know that 4.02 times 10 to the 9 metric tons of crude oil are produced every year, we have to convert that into the rate that the planes use. So let's go ahead and try that. And um, I've done a bunch of conversion videos already. So let's go ahead and check those out. All right. So remember, I like to do this little bar. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so my goal is to convert this from metric tons of crude oil, but the plane uses kerosene. So first I gotta cancel out metric tons of crude oil with, uh, to convert to kerosene. And so I have metric tons here and I need tons. So with the Sanchineering conversion table, we look over here and we see that 0 0.001 metric tons are in one kilogram. And then we can convert kilograms right here to tons. So first 0 0.001, so first right here. 0.001 metric tons, point metric tons is in one kilogram, 
and then now we have kilograms and 0 0.453593 kilograms is in 5, 5 times 10 to negative 4 times. I know this can be a little bit messy, but in terms of conversions, this is pretty much as bad as it gets. All right, um, 4.593. Scene one, Apple, take one. 4.53. Scene one, Apple, take two. 4.5. Six and a half hours later. 0 0.453593. 0 0.4, 0 0.453593 kilograms per five times 10 to negative four times. Perfect, before we continue, let's go ahead and check if these cancel out. So metric tons converts out metric tons, kilograms with kilograms. So perfect, we're left with tons of crude oil. This is crude oil, so I'm just gonna cancel that out before we get confused. And now using this conversion factor, if we know that seven tons of crude oil are in one ton of kerosene, seven tons of crude oil is in one ton of kerosene, we can cancel out tons of crude oil and we're left with tons of kerosene. All right, perfect. Um, what else do we know? So if you are stuck there, maybe go ahead and try to continue from there. You got it? All right. The next thing is we know the density of kerosene. So this is actually the density of kerosene. And we can calculate this out for the sake of not wasting time. I'm going to just leave this as some variables. So let's assume we calculate this out and we say that this is some variable x in units of some, some number x and units of tons of kerosene. And this will be useful, especially for this problem, so let's check it out. You can go ahead and calculate it out if you're not comfortable, that's totally fine. I would probably do that a couple years ago. So let's just write it again. So we have x tons of kerosene, where x is all this multiplication nonsense. Oh, per year, ooh, almost forgot that, see? Gotta be careful. x tons per year. All right, so what else we got? Um, so the density of kerosene is 0 0.965 grams per centimeter cube. I'm probably gonna show another video for this. Try to do this little challenge for yourself. Prove to yourself that this is actually 900, 965 kilograms per meter cube. Um, try to do that by yourself if, if that's not already clear to you. Don't memorize it, try to prove it. Uh, I'll give you some hints. A gram is how many kilograms and a centimeter is how many meters. That's your clue, try that out. It's very useful. All right, so now we're left in tons per year, and now we can um, cancel out using the dens uh, yeah, using the density. But we need to convert tons to kilograms. So a ton, and notice how we're actually going back. So a five times ten to negative four tons is again zero point five. So let me write that again. Five times ten to negative four tons is actually zero point zero point four five three five nine three. Just to make sure, let's cancel out tons and tons. But look, this is on top and this is on bottom, so we can cancel out this guy. And this is on bottom and this is on top, so we can cancel out this guy. So that that's why um, I wanted to hold off for doing the calculation, because we can save time inputting those same numbers twice. So now that we have, so now this is actually going to be in kilograms of kerosene, because this is a density, kilograms of kerosene, kgk. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. <laughs> All right. So what do we have? Kilograms of kerosene, and now what do we use? The density, that's right. So this density is 965 kilograms per meter cube of kerosene. So 965 kilograms per meter cube of kerosene. Do you guys remember the concept of density? Kilograms of kerosene cancels out with kilograms of kerosene. Perfect. So now what that means is, what have we done so far? Let's, let's take a step back, because it's, it's getting a little bit messy. So we've used the, the annual world production of crude oil converted to the mass of kerosene using this conversion factor. So let's just cancel that out. And using the density of kerosene, we've also canceled out this. Using the density of kerosene, now we have the mass, the volume of kerosene, rather. Now that we have the volume of kerosene, we can convert from meters cubed to imperial gallons. So let's do that next. And again, let's, let's, uh, let's calculate this again without actually calculating, just to, for the sake of simplicity. So let's just call it x prime meter, meters cubed of kerosene per year. Again, if you're not comfortable, just go ahead and calculate it out. You're going to have to multiply this, divide by this stuff, and then divide by that stuff. But I, I don't really want to do that at the moment. So now we have some volume of kerosene per year. All right, we're almost done. So what else do we know? That the aircraft consumes 5,320 imperial gallons of kerosene per hour per plane. So if you look at this, we look at volume. We currently have meters cubed, which should be in volume, so one meters cubed. And we need 
Imperial Gallon. And look, oh look, Imperial Gallon. So we use one meter cubed is 220.83 Imperial Gallons. So it's 220.83 Imperial Gallons. It's hard to write with the mouse. Um, so cancel on meters cubed, and now we have Imperial Gallons. Um, <clears throat> and cool, now we can multiply this conversion factor. So we have 5,320 Imperial Gallons imperial gallons of kerosene per hour and if we calculate this we can cancel out imperial gallons okay so we're almost done we have we have some weird units we have hours times plane divided by years and our last conversion factor is 14 hours of flight per day well how do we know if we want to multiply or divide well one thing that is useful is to realize that it says 5320 imperial gallons of kerosene per hour of flight so this is actually per hour of flight and it flies an hour of 14 hours per day. So this is actually 14 hours of flight. So if we have hours of flight on here, we want to actually cancel out with this 14 hours of flight. So that's, that means we have to divide. Does that make sense? If not, pause it and think about it for a second. 2,000 years later. You got it? You got it? So we have 14 hours of flight per day. Cool. So now we have hours and hours and we got planes. All we got to do is cancel out years and days. How do we do that? Well, that should be somewhat intuitive, right? Because one year is, what, 365 days. All right, so we can cancel out days, days, years, and years. So it, it, it could be, I can see it looks quite daunting. I'm sorry about my penmanship. It's not, the, I know it's not the best, but um, all we have to do is multiply everything on top divided by everything on bottom. So if you're comfortable with so if you're comfortable with um, calculations you can skip this part or try it by yourself. One of my biggest challenges was actually not really the math, it was more so the calculations. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and calculate this with you guys. Um, and the reason I'm using Google is just to show that you can really use anything as a calculator. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be trying this by yourself at home. I mean I get it, it's summer and you're not even taking this class. So, uh, 4.02 times 10 to the 9 um, divided by 0 0.001 times, oh, we cancel it out, so we don't need that. Times 1 divided by 7. I didn't really need the 1, but, and that is x tons per year. And now, this is nothing, this is nothing, times 1 divided by 965. All right, you with me so far? And lastly, so we're at x prime times 220 divided by 5320 divided by 14 divided by 365. So I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I'm just multiplying everything on top divided by everything on bottom. And our answer is 4,816. I like to write the final answer in green. 4,816 planes. So that's our final answer. I know it's messy. Um, maybe rather than practicing engineering, I should just like practice like my penmanship because I know it's like extremely messy. No, but I there's really no way of understanding this unless you try it by yourself. So if you didn't understand it, just grab a piece of paper, grab a calculator, work the problem out by yourself, and then only at the parts that you get stuck on, that's when you refer back to the video. Unit conversions can be extremely messy. I know it's like chaotic right now, but um, yeah, just uh, try to work the problem by yourself. If you get stuck, refer back to the video. Yeah, honestly, like I said before, I think problems... I just think that problems are extremely useful for practicing and actually determining whether you understand something. Yeah, you might understand density, you might understand unit convergence, but can you actually put it to the test and get the right answer? Cool, so I hope you actually enjoyed this problem and understood this problem. We're gonna just keep on doing these problems. Subscribe to The Ascension Year. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. You can PM me on Instagram or Facebook at Sanchineering. Check out my website. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.